Hello everyone. I uh, see it's been a long time since I did my Soxlet extraction video, uh, extraction of medical marijuana via Soxlet extractor. And so I thought I would uh, do a video showing my entire process that I've since developed uh, over a period of time. I'm currently using I mean, I'm sorry, acetone as the as solvent and um, I prepared some uh, de decarboxylated material. I had five jars roughly. I don't know how many ounces that relates to, but five jars that I decarb first via a method I saw online, which was to uh, put your material in a mason jar, put it in the oven, um, and then uh, immerse uh, or insert a, uh, a thermometer or thermocouple in, in the middle of the jar, of one sample jar, uh, with the lid off. Uh, bring the oven up to 350, run it at 350 until the interior of the sample jar shows 200 degrees. Then you reduce the oven temperature to 220, uh, remove the thermocouple, put the lids on the jars, and then uh, let them dwell for 20 minutes uh, at that temperature, and then um, of course turn it off take it out. So this material has been exposed to that process. I'm currently experimenting, experimenting with it to see if it's superior to the non-decarbed material for this process uh, these would be my um, my spray liniment that I make uh, with the oil that I get from this process so there's my uh, sample cup I'm going to measure out one ounce I'm currently using one ounce of material and uh, about 10 ounces of acetone for the process per uh, load and that results in about uh, six to eight ounces of solution saturated with oil which then I can evaporate off. I don't care about losing the acetone uh, because it's relatively cheap and uh, I may recover it later but for right now I'm just evaporating it off. Let me tear out this here. Uh, put in our uh, 28 grams. Get this going here. Whoops, a bit too much. I know that that uh, the, the my sock slit would only will only accommodate about the one ounce of plant material. I've, okay, 28.42. There we go. All set. And then what we do next is we have to um, grind the material. I find that a, a regular coffee grinder works just fine just as well as anything else you might use. In fact, I use this every day for my flaxseed as well. I don't mind the, the herbal residue in there. So I'll take my coffee grinder, put in the material. Dig it up. I want it kind of a not quite well that's kind of like a powder I do it finer than that when I'm using when I'm making canna flour that I use in my brownies I, uh, I enhance my brownies with additional canna flour when I make them and now I need my other little uh, container here I'll uh, pour my finished material into there there we go Okay, that part's finished. Put my coffee grinder back away. Okay, now what I like to use is the Melita um, coffee filters. These are uh, natural brown, so there's no bleach or dyes or whatever in there. Um, and by the way, I hope the audio is coming out okay on this because I've never really videoed the thing from this this remote standpoint. I've always been right on top of the camcorder. But here is my coffee filter. And first I, I fold it like this. Okay, and then I fold the bottom up like this. Open it up. I pinched the bottom just a little bit so it'll fit in my 
uh, extractor in the throat. And then I kind of wiggle this up here. It's, it's different every time. You have to kind of approximate this thing. And um, shake that down there. And I try to get it so I can close everything with one staple. So I don't have a bunch of hardware hanging out in the way. Okay, that looks pretty decent. Okay, now I close that with a staple. And there you have it. And it's, it's loose enough I can kind of work it around to get it in the socket in the extraction chamber. And it, it, it goes about, about like that, okay? Now, I'm going to close for now. And the next, next you see will be outside loading the socket. Well, I see I have a little hanging flap there, so I'm going to put one more staple. And try to get one more staple right in there. Okay, now, that'll go in there, I'm sure. You have to be careful at the bottom of this, because if too much pressure will open that up. It'll open up this bottom seam here. So this is about right. This is my one ounce of material. Got it in there. It's a nut. It's not so windy day today, so I'll be able to go outside and uh, video actually uh, my actually uh, unloading the sock slip from the previous batch and loading this batch up. So uh, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Hey there, I'm back again. This is my current socklet setup. And you'll see that this thing is, is just about ready to dump. It's, it's right up close to the siphon tube. Um, my boiling flask is, is kind of really low in the bottom and not boiling very much. Uh, my temperature, I don't know if you can see that, my temperature set is at about 76 C. So this one I've had running for a couple days. I just didn't have time to come back and unload it. But with the socklet, the beauty is you can just let it keep running and nothing is really going to change um, if everything's set up right that is and you don't lose your solvent um, this thing is pretty cool even though it's out in the sunlight and I know you're not supposed to do this in the sunlight but excuse me I don't have any shade for it yet I'm in the desert so I don't have any other excuse but at any rate uh, this is uh, liquid I mean it's uh, clear you can see it's ready to dump so I'm going to interrupt the process but first I wanted to show you the rest of it uh, before I put the camera on the tripod and uh, and fixed with one one viewpoint. There's my sample that I prepared just a while ago. There's my uh, jar that I put everything in when I'm finished. Um, here's my modified refrigerator. I had a, a spare two cubic foot little refrigerator freezer. So what I did was punch some holes in the side. I punched these holes in the side there so I could uh, do my plumbing and my electrical. I took a tote and uh, cut it down so it would fit in there without interfering with anything. And boy, I see my uh, evaporator is getting kind of iced up. But that's what I did. I run the water on the evaporator. You see there, I have that little tube. I let run the return water on the evaporator to, to cool it down. And then I pick up the water with that pump in there. I don't know if you can see that pump. Little tiny pump. Pick up the water and run it up to the socket. And thanks so much for everybody's comments. Um, a lot of them very helpful. That's what helped me get this thing set up to work very well. I insulate the cold area there. Um, my tubing, of course, the supply goes in the bottom, as many of you said. Um, I was an idiot. I wasn't thinking when I set it up. Um, I have an oil bath for my boiling flask. I use mineral oil because it's not, not as dirty as other oils. Uh, and it's, you know, it comes off pretty well. Um, acetone for my solvent. I'm using using this acetone right here, you know, from the hardware store. Um, and uh, when I evaporate it, I'm pretty sure everything's gone. I can, I've got a pretty sensitive nose, and I can't detect any acetone odor in there, and it's, it's very clean stuff. So uh, I'm going to take my insulation off here, so you can see that in there. And you see uh, there's not much dripping going on because the liquid in the bottom is, is, has a higher boiling point because it's saturated with uh, cannabis oil. You see the solution's clear, so everything's gone out of it. Okay, now you saw the setup. I'm going to stop it and put it on the uh, tripod so I can uh, perform the thing, and you can see it. Uh, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, <clears throat> I think you can uh, see what's going on here. First of all, I take the um, condenser out. This is the unloading process. 
I'm going to take the condenser out and uh, set it down on my workbench. Okay. Then I get this thing loosened up so I can get it out and try not to spill the solvent in there because I don't have to let that waste. I can reuse it. There we go. Didn't get that loose enough. Whoops. Whoops, I just screwed up. I let the solvent go back in there. So now I'm going to have to just uh, evaporate that off, and which is the way I've been norm normally been doing it. I just happened to catch this one at the point where everything was exhausted, and um, I could recover that. But no big deal. The main main point here is the uh, oil at the end of the process. Be very careful with that. It's all glass. So this is my. Uh, uh, this is my evaporation jar, so I'll pour this in there. I have boiling stones uh, in the bottom. That was another suggestion I got from someone about um, preventing problems, that is a flashover or whatnot, from um, not boiling evenly in a smooth bottom vessel. So um, the idea is you put in some chips or stones or what have you. I just gathered some stones out of my yard, little tiny pebbles, and put them in there, some irregular looking stuff, uh, so that there are plenty of surfaces for bubbles to form on, and that uh, makes a boiling process much better and safer. So then I uh, set that aside. I have a little, I'll show you when I'm finished here. I have a little uh, heater plate that I set that on. I'm going to pull that out of there. Okay, that's exhausted. You can see that clear liquid comes out. So that material is exhausted. I set that with my other stack. This is my fresh load right here. I'm going to kind of manipulate that in there. Okay, that's down at the bottom. Then uh, we put the flask and the Soxlid extractor vessel back together. Now this is where uh, I wanted to show how I do this. Um, I need to refill. I'm going to crank up here so you can see how I do this. I'm going to re-need, re -need, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm going to need to refill my uh, flask here. So I found the best way to do it is just put a funnel on the top of the extractor, use a separate little vessel, a uh, little measuring cup, what have you. So then I, um, I'm going to measure out my solvent, which like I said is acetone. Measure out my solvent. Okay, there's four ounces. Uh, this way I feel that the uh, the material is going to soak up its required amount, the amount that's going to stay in there when I pull it out, um, and I'm going to have enough for the extraction and refluxing. Okay, that was one cup, and I'm going to add uh, another quarter cup or so. Okay, that should be good. Now that'll be enough in my flask to go unattended for some time. Put my solvent away here. Take the funnel out. Put in the condenser. Clamp that down. Okay, then I'm going to put my insulation over there. This is just a uh, some speaker baffling that's uh, that works pretty well for keeping that out of the sun and out of the heat, keeping that essential cold area right there as cold as I can make it. And um, that's it for the setup. So I'm going to close for now. Um, wait, I'll swing over there and show you. I'm just using one of these little one of these little hot plates that uh, you can get anywhere, five and dime, what have you. 
Um, see there, it's just sitting on there. And I'll just let that sit for a few hours and most of the acetone will go away. Then I'll set it aside and just let it continue to air dry until there's no more acetone odor. Then I can incorporate it into my uh, medicinal products that I make for my pain relief. Um, I'm going to try to come back. I've got some chores to do. I'll come back and catch a glimpse of this thing when it's uh, discharging, when it's emptying out. And uh, show you what's happening. Until then, adios. Okay, I'm back. You can see here it's been running for, I'd say, a couple hours. And uh, you can see the drip rate's pretty decent there. It's dripping down at a pretty good rate. My boiling is going on at a pretty good rate. And you see my, my dry out jar here. It's got, uh, it's got a little ways to go. Let me smell it. I can still detect a little bit of acetone in there, so it's, it's not quite ready. But see, it's fairly liquid right now, but I'm sure there's a little bit of water from condensate and that in there. So once this has gotten a little bit more solid, I'll let it sit and it'll get to, to be a really heavy consistency tar-like material, which they, I then reconstitute with alcohol, or not, not reconstitute, but liquefy it with alcohol in suspension so it becomes sprayable. And then I add some uh, DMSO to it and then a little uh, peppermint for a cooling effect and uh, voila, it's very effective very effective and you see the material the solvent is quite dark so after it's uh, cycled again back to the point where it's nearly clear um, that load will be finished and uh, I'm sure you saw it extract you saw it dump in my other video so I won't bother for that so that completes this video uh, hopefully it answered any questions I just saw a post on this uh, on the previous video by the way asking what the components were and of course um, this is the boiling flask this is the soxlet extractor vessel the extraction chamber the little gizmo in there that's my that's my homemade uh, extraction thimble um, I saw no need to buy thimbles at a dollar to five dollars a piece it's ridiculous the cup works just as well gets all the material out everything that I need see there's the drip down there from this angle Maybe I need to pull that down a little bit. Yep, that's what it is. I need to hang it down a little bit. I'll correct that. Didn't put it on properly when I did the other segment of the video. But there you have it. I'll update you again later on another aspect of my medicine that I make. Thanks for looking.